What's up, you guys? Uh, thank you in advance for attending my TED Talk. <laughs> so, I'm a little bit um, on a soapbox. I have some stuff to share with you guys, and I know it's probably relevant to a lot of y'all, especially if you're in network marketing, if you're an entrepreneur, if you work with other people in general. Um, and so, here's the thing. I know that a lot of us are under like quarantine and all of that. But still, and I, I actually think maybe it's even more important um, if you're in quarantine, that means you're probably more associating and talking to people online um, through text messengers, through Facebook chats, and things like that. So I think this is probably gonna be really relevant to a lot of you guys. Um, what I want to do is invite you to share it. Um, if you do share it, let me know that you've shared. If you're watching here live, just comment and say hi because I can see a number but I can't see a name until you say something. And if you share it, hit the share button and then um, just let me know that you shared it as well. Um, I'd love to create a conversation around this because I feel like if you are an entrepreneur, um, if you are in network marketing, if you work with people, you are going to run into situations where there is drama, there is gossip, there are people who have their own agendas, have their own intentions, right? Um, and they also have their own baggage, they also have their own stories. And so I wanna share um, just some scenarios with you guys that I've, I've personally been a part of um, on the receiving end of quite a bit of drama, of just blame and stuff like that. Of course, just like you, right? Just like everybody has. But I wanna give you some tips on how to handle things like that when it comes up. It's not an if, it's a when. Um, it's because you're working with people. You know what I mean? And people are people. There's human beings behind that computer screen, right? So one of the things that I think is really important um, when you are dealing with scenarios where you're talking to other people or you discover maybe that other people are talking about you to other people. How many of you have ever experienced that? <laughs> So when that happens, you know, it's one of those things where you always have a choice. You don't have a choice in what exactly is happening in terms of if someone's going to say something about you, if something's going to be made up about you behind the scenes, somebody's going to lie, somebody's going to exaggerate the truth, somebody's just literally going to make up a scenario in order to make themselves look better, right? Those are some things that are gonna happen. Here's the thing though. It is in your control over how you respond to it. So this can take practice though. Like if you've ever been in a scenario where you discover that that's happening and it's, it's, it's human nature, you guys, to be really pissed off <laughs> and to feel like, oh, that's not true. I wanna stand up for what's right and I wanna fight for myself and I wanna get the truth out there and tell them what really happened and all of that. And, Yes, you're right to do that, but on the other hand, you may have to realize sometimes the thing is not the thing. Sometimes it's not even about you at all. So let's start with drama. So sometimes there are scenarios where people, situations, people create drama. Why do they do that? Why do people create drama where there wasn't drama before, okay? So, and I think especially like right now, people are bored. People are bored out in quarantine. Um, they're bored for whatever reason, right? And some people may stir the pot. They may stir up drama simply because they're bored. They kind of just want to see what happens. Some people stir up drama because they want to take the vision off of themselves. They want to make people not see them for what is really happening and they want to point the eyeballs at someone else. If they can stir up drama and they can be in the thick of all this drama, you probably know people like this, maybe in your personal life, your family, your business, if they're stirring the pot, they're creating conversations and it, it gives them like this dopamine hit. It makes them feel like they're doing something to get people to start talking. Even if it's a negative conversation, it's still conversation, right? It's kind of like that phrase, any news, even bad news is news, right? Any press is press. And I think that some people operate their life that way. Like if there's not something crazy happening at the moment, they look for ways to make crazy happen, <laughs> okay? So there's drama. Um, a lot of times drama can stem from like misunderstandings. A lot of times from my experience, drama is created when it's like there's bits and pieces of information missing in a whole bunch of different conversations. 
And now y'all know, I tend to be the type of person who gets into like this kumbaya, everybody can be friends, rainbows and unicorns. Okay, I get it. That's a personality thing with me. But I truly think that like if everybody took a, a step back and realized, okay, there's drama, but there's missing parts of that conversation. If only so-and-so knew that this happened, if only so-and-so knew that that conversation was happening, would there be so much drama, right? So let me talk about gossip. Now, I want to share with you guys gossip because I feel like especially, um, especially in this online world, <clears throat> there are conversations that need to happen where you can have an adult conversation with people and in the way that you talk about it to people, it doesn't have to be gossip, okay? Now, I've heard some people who are like, well, if it's true, it's not gossip. Okay, maybe, but I want you to consider, is it true, is it necessary, and is it kind? Just because it's true, is it necessary? Do you have to talk about it? Do you need to have like all of it out there all over the place? Um, is it kind? Does it paint some, even though it's true, does it paint someone in a positive light? Or are you gossiping? Are you sharing this information only for the purpose of making someone else look bad in order to make you look better? That's where you have to kind of check yourself. Yes, is it true? Maybe. But does it need to be said? Does it need to be said in such a way that you're trying to say it? So the other thing is um, the blame game. Right, so the blame game is basically when you know darn well what you did was created by you, <laughs> okay? So like, maybe you know some people who do this where they got themselves in a really crappy situation. They did something that they're not too proud of. They did something that was out of integrity, that was totally below the belt, um, but they need someone to blame. They need a circumstance a company, a comp plan, an upline, a coach, a business partner. They need someone to blame so that they feel justified to do the thing that they did. Have you ever been in a situation like that? I have. <laughs> Where sometimes it's like it's you on the receiving end of being blamed for your part, what you said, what you did, what you didn't do because someone else got busted doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. Somebody else gets busted for doing something they're not supposed to do and immediately they're like, oh, but wait, I was because it was because of her. It was because she did this and then that happened and then I said this and that and that's why I did the thing that I did. Okay, so let me just preface all of this with <clears throat> people are people. People are human beings and human beings, we are not perfect, okay? Even though some of us try, some of us try to learn, um, we're not perfect. Everybody is going to mess up, screw up, and be a jerk at some point, right? So forgiveness, I would think, is the first part, and that's probably the hardest part, but that's something that you can control. So if somebody has wronged you, if somebody is gossiping about you, if somebody is blaming you for something that you know darn well they did, they caused, you have a choice, and it's going to take practice, and unfortunately, the practice is going to mean that you're gonna to have to be in that situation many, many, many times so that you can get better in your response time. You can get better in how you choose to respond. I promise you, it will grow you, it will hurt you, it's gonna stretch you, but it is worth making this progress because over time, like for me personally, there was a time where I would have bit back. And there was a time where I would have like riled up the, I would pull out the redhead. I'd be like, listen, oh no, you didn't. Here's what happened. I have screenshots and I have this and I have that and you did this and oh, by the way, and there was a time where I would have done that. Now, um, I would like to say that I've aged <laughs> and I've gotten a little wiser where now I have learned to take a breath, take a step back, say a prayer, <laughs> get, your, get your center, right? And realize probably the most important part is that Hurting people hurt people, okay? So sometimes people do or say things at you or to you to blame you or to pin something on you or to talk about you, but it's not even about you. It's a lot of times it's not even about you, right? 
So if you catch someone, let's say that somebody calls you up and they're just like chatterbox in your ear and they wanna talk to you and gossip and they're talking crap about somebody that you mutually know, right? I wanna challenge you and this is really, this is, this is gonna grow you, okay? But I wanna challenge you to be strong enough to actually stop a conversation and tell that person, I'm not available for this type of conversation. Let's do something more productive. Okay, and it's hard. That is a really hard thing to say, like when you're thick of it. Hey, Luttrell, um, that's, that's hard. It's hard to stop somebody from gossiping and going down that road and you being that person and saying, we're headed down a road where neither one of us really wanna go down. Can we do something more productive? Can we talk about something else? Can we change the subject? Um, that's gonna require you to go high, to, to stay high, to maintain your own sense of integrity, even when you know you're in the right, or you think you know, right? Even if you are confident that what you're saying or what you're collab, you know, chewing on with this other person is the truth. It's not that, it's not that first of all, you don't want to get yourself in a position where now you're the one gossiping and stirring up drama and all this kind of stuff. But I want you to consider something. <clears throat> depending on who you're talking to, okay? If someone keeps calling you and saying stuff to you about someone else, odds are they're calling other people, saying stuff about you to other people. So if they're free enough to talk crap about other people to you, odds are they are free enough to talk crap about you to other people. So consider that. When you're on the receiving end and you're listening to all of this garbage, right? It's just garbage in, garbage out. So if they're listening to a bunch of garbage and gossip, they're probably going to be spewing out a lot of garbage or gossip, okay? So you have to understand what's being said about you to others is probably likely being said about others or about you to others. It's, it's like this cycle, okay? But I want you to keep in mind that, like I said, hurting people hurt people. It sometimes is not even about you. Some people have in-depth trauma, prior trauma, prior hurts, baggage. Maybe they've been scorned by um, another kind of business. Maybe they've been scorned or hurt by somebody with your type of personality. Maybe they're carrying that baggage into the relationship with you and they don't trust anybody for that matter, but they also don't trust that what they're hearing is the truth, right? So they automatically come into a relationship with their claws out, like a defensive mechanism. And then like any other mammal, any other animal, when someone is backed into a corner, they lash out. Sometimes people do really stupid things in fear. They act really weird in scarcity or in a place of lack when they're at risk of losing something they do really dumb things and they make really dumb decisions and so this is where like my kumbaya comes in is like i i do believe that some people act that way and lash out in fear in anger in scarcity in lack but then they eventually, they have an aha moment. So at some point, they're gonna have an awakening. I don't know, some people do, some people don't. But what if they have an awakening and they realize, wow, I was an ass. <laughs> what if they realize that? I, I, tr I tend to, now, I'm like way over here, I tend to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive, right? Anybody else? Like, I tend to be that person until someone really truly is like, Okay, clearly that's a bad person. <laughs> uh, there are other people on the way other end of the spectrum where some people way on the other end of the spectrum start every kind of relationship from a position of, nope, I'm not gonna let that person in. I don't like people, I don't trust people. You gotta prove that you're worth my trust before I let you in, right? So that's way over on the other spectrum and you screw them once and they're done. Those people are hurting. Those people have most likely experienced some kind of trauma and a reason to not trust other people at some point in their life, okay? So try to be like down the middle in terms of you don't wanna just be so naive that you're a total doormat over and over and over, but you also, you know, don't let people use you as a pawn, okay? I've been there, I have done that, I have been used as a pawn. Don't allow people to use you in their game, okay? 
But on the other side, don't be so jaded and skeptical and carry so much baggage that you don't let any of the good stuff in either. So going down the middle of the road basically is being able to be strong enough and say, I'm not available to this conversation. It's not productive. I don't want to be a part of this conversation. I would like to keep like our conversations high level, um, productive, positive. And if it can't be that, then let's stop talking or let's talk about something different. <laughs> okay. That's a challenging part of conversation that sometimes you're going to have to have. Hey, Barbara. Yeah. And I mean, here's the thing. Some people can be nasty for no reason. Exactly like Barbara said. I mean, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt sometimes to a fault. Um, but it, it's true. Like a lot, there are some people who just are just not very good people, right? So you have to have discernment in that area or at least have a friend who has discernment. <laughs> I have a husband and several friends who have discernment in areas that I lack. I tend to just take everybody at face value and oh, it's cool. They said it's cool, so it's cool. Or oh, they said they were gonna do this, so surely they're gonna do that, right? No, that's sometimes not the truth. So here's what I want to share with you is be available to those conversations that uplift you and inspire you and empower you to do more. Don't become available to conversations that bring you down, make you feel bad, make you feel negative about yourself or about other people, okay? This, you've gotta be able to bless and release. So it is okay to be able to maybe do, um, it's, I heard a phrase the other day about like, just because, just because we're no longer friends doesn't mean I don't want you to eat. It just means I don't want you to be eating at my table. I thought that was really powerful. I don't know who said it. I have to go back or somebody, somebody correct me if I don't know who it is, but it was, it's very powerful. Do you have people in your life where you've maybe cut ties from but you still wish them well, you still wanna see them do well, you just don't want them sitting at your dining room table. <laughs> you're not gonna invite you, in, they're not gonna invite you to their living room, you're not gonna invite them to your bar mitzvah, but it's not like, you know, you don't hate the person. There shouldn't be any room for hate and unforgiveness. If you can't forgive somebody, that's not hurting anybody but yourself. You have to learn to bless and release, forgive, you don't have to forget, but you do need to forgive because that's on you. That's your choice. That's your action that you can do. So when somebody has wronged you, bless and release, forgive them, realize you might not know the whole story. You might not know the whole story. Something else may be hurting them or going on behind the scenes that you don't know about and hurting people hurt people, okay? So distance yourself, yes. Make where you're not available to conversations, yes. But don't hold on to grudges, don't hold on to anger, don't hold on to hate, because that literally will hurt your heart and it will affect everything else you do. It'll affect your business, it'll affect your other relationships, it'll affect potential future relationships, it'll it'll tarnish everything that you have your hands on. It's like it's like this freaking virus, right? It's so contagious. Anger and hate, okay, and unforgiveness. So onward and upward. I really want you guys also, um, there is a book called the four agreements. Um, you can get on Amazon. There's a book called the four agreements. And basically it's, it says it's a practical guide to personal freedom. Okay. So what does that mean? So basically the four agreements, I'll read this to you. It's so number one, and this is, this is like, we teach this on our team a, a lot. Um, it's basically the four pillars, like cornerstones, right? Of how to operate every area of your business as best as you can. Keep in mind you're human. You're going to screw up. You're, there are going to be times where you're a jerk. There are going to be times where you do something completely off kilter, right? Because of scenarios that are going on or whatever, you're going to, the human side of you is going to fail and you're going to shift into, you're going to catch yourself gossiping. You're going to catch yourself creating drama. You're going to catch yourself blaming someone or something for you not doing something or having something. Okay. Because you're a human. So start with yourself, forgive yourself. <laughs> but the four agreements basically is be impeccable with your word. So numero uno, Okay, it's the first thing I look for in any kind of relationship. If someone is of integrity, they're gonna do what they say, they're gonna say what they're gonna do, and they actually do it. They are impeccable with their word. They're also the type of person who only uses their words as much as possible, okay? They only use their words to speak life into someone. They don't use their words to speak negatively. They don't use their words to bring other people down or to, to contribute 
to hate, okay? It's not, I'm not the person who thinks that, oh, there's never gonna be hate in the world. Of course, they're, we live in a fallen world. But your, if you're impeccable with your word, that means that you're gonna use your words to try to at least diffuse the hate or at least not spread it, right? So being impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take it personally. And this one was really hard. Just recently, I had a situation where someone was blaming me for something, period. I won't go more into it than that. And I had to like take a breath because I was being accused of something that was absolutely not correct in my eyes, but in their eyes, maybe so. I don't know, right? So I have to realize though, <clears throat> not to take it personally. Because in this person's situation, they're going through a lot of crap right now. <laughs> like their whole world is falling down, right? And I had to realize I am a teeny tiny little blip on the radar of that massive thing that's happening with this person, okay? And even though they feel like I have a part in some of this stuff and they're blaming me for pieces and parts of it, I had to realize I can't take it personally if that person is being hurt, if that person is going through their own trauma, okay? Now, sometimes you have to like not take it personally because really what they're doing is they're casting their own reflection onto you. It's a term like a psychologist call it projection. Have you ever had somebody basically accuse you of doing or being a certain type of way when you're like, like, are you looking in the mirror? Are you talking about me? Because you're describing yourself. <laughs> okay, so... It, it is one of those things, maybe you, maybe you can't take it personally. Maybe you're suffering pointlessly by taking everything as if it's actually meant for you on a personal level. The third one is don't make assumptions. I have found, again recently, I have found that sometimes there are missing pieces of conversation. I have found that there are pieces and parts that some people tend to not even know about that if they did know about their tune might change. So don't make assumptions, have the courage to like actually have that phone call and say, Hey, listen, this conversation just came up. I'd really like to chat with you about it. I'd like to figure out what happened. What am I missing? Like, let's just chat woman to woman, man to man. Let's just kind of figure it out. Like, let's just actually have a discussion, but don't make don't make assumptions that you know what happened by listening to a third party, by hearing it secondhand through the grapevine or just assuming because of past history that you know what happened. And the fourth one is do your best. And this is, this it's, it's to me, this means go back and always remember you're a human being. You are all, you're going to fail. You're going to slip. Okay, in one of these four categories, you're going to slip. You're going to have situations where um, you do participate, okay, in the drama, in the gossip, in all of that kind of stuff. But if you can kind of stick to a, just I'm trying to do my best, I'm trying to keep it at a high level and keep my word and not taking it personally and don't make assumptions and all of that, you'll be a different type of person. It's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal. So like when it comes to your business and dealing with other people, especially online, you guys, <clears throat> a lot of our conversations are in text messages. A lot of our conversations are um, on Facebook Messenger, like where we're typing. And I, I, I like sometimes hopping on the phone or using voice chat because a lot of times people can't tell your voice, they can't hear your heart in a text message. So if you can like reach out to somebody and actually have a phone call, have a phone conversation where you can hear if someone is really, like you can hear it in somebody's voice a lot of times, like if they're lying, if they're telling the truth, if they're trying to hide something or whatever, and I just, I feel like that's a good thing. But ultimately, just remember, <clears throat> bless and release, <laughs> onward and upward, you have to kind of like recenter yourself sometimes, you know, um, where if that's happening to you, recenter yourself and realize, okay, what was my part in this? What can I do? If anything, should I do anything to make it better? Would speaking about it to this actual person, to the epicenter, to the person, actually not about this person, but going to that person, would that make it better or would that make it worse? Um, or should I just let it rest for a minute and see kind of what happens, right? Should I just let it unfold and play out for them to have their awakening, their aha moment? Because a lot of times it all kind of sorts themselves out. but. Just on a human level, and especially like right now with everything going on, 
I think it's more important than ever to just remember that if somebody's acting out, remember how it is when if you have if you have kids or if you've ever been around little kids, sometimes when people are um, in a position where like as a little kid, it's like when we say, well, well they're tired, or just all this kind of nonsense, right? And so just keep in mind, hurting people hurt people. Sometimes people do dumb things when they're in situations that they don't know how to handle. So give people grace, especially during stressful times like this, especially online, especially in stressful situations when it comes to people's business, comes to people's money, um, just give people grace and try and believe the best in people without getting walked on. It's kind of a fine line. So thank you for attending my TED Talk. I just had to get that out there because I was going through and I was reading back through the Four Agreements book and I just thought that was really good and so applicable um, to a lot of you guys. And I just, I, I really hope that you guys can take it to heart. Share this if you felt it was helpful. Let me know if you catch it on replay. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys and I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye you guys.